many sculptors and painters present their works there. There's also a lot of traveling exhibition, but it was not always our art gallery or our ethnographical museum. For quite a while, this was our royal palace, where our kings and queens used to live. And now, in order to tell you more about our kings and queens, it's time to put some drama in your life. Because now they'll be here a theatrical performance with the best six actors among you, okay? But don't be afraid because you're not going to talk, you're not going to act, you're just going to be sitting here and being beautiful, and I'll do all the work. It's a good deal, right? So in a moment, I'll need six very brave volunteers to represent different nationalities. Austrians, Germans, Bulgarians, but you don't have to have anything to do with that nationality. You can just play a role, okay? So be brave and help all of us have fun in the moment when I ask for volunteers. First of all, I'll need somebody to represent a German. Who would like to represent a German? Does that have to be a German? Would you like to be our German? German? Don't worry. It doesn't hurt too much, just a little humiliation. It's okay, just a little humiliation. Number one. Number one. Then, we need somebody to represent an Austrian guy. Who would like to represent an Austrian? You want to be an Austrian? Hey, hey, I see you want to be an Austrian. And then we need an Italian princess. You might have you for the role of the Italian princess. So come here on the third position, number three. And then we need somebody to represent a Bulgarian. You see, this is a very cool role because Bulgarians are here. They're very cool. So anyone would like to represent a Bulgarian? Would you like to be a Bulgarian? Come, come. Come on position number four. Then I need somebody to represent the second Bulgarian. Who is brave enough to represent the second Bulgarian? Would you like to hear a second Bulgarian? Come here a second Bulgarian. Okay. Go on position number five. Come closer to each other guys. Then we need a third Bulgarian, but this time a communist Bulgarian. Who wants to be the communist Bulgarian? Anyone? You look like a communist. No particular reason, just kidding. Okay, so. Now you guys, please come a bit closer over here in front of me. You all back group behind the white line, but together. So you guys, that's because you guys have a very, very important role. You're the strong-spirited Bulgarian nation. So every time I say some keywords, you have to react very strongly. Every time I say happy, you go yeah. Let's try. Happy. Yeah. Much louder than that. Much louder. Happy. Yeah. Every time I say angry, you go boo. Ooh. And every time I say sad, you go, eh. okay? Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yeah. Sure. And I'm born ready so we can begin. <laughs> so, once upon a time, it was the year 1878. We were already five centuries under Ottoman rule. So we're a little bit sad about that. Oh. But then comes the Russian Ottoman Liberation War and we're free and very happy. Yeah. But not so fast because we have a little problem. <laughs> After five centuries of Ottoman rule, we don't have any royal blood in our society, so we don't know who to put as a king. So we, as genius as we are, we decide we can import the king from outside to rule upon us. <laughs> so we invite Alexander Battenberg from Germany. Don't be a root king, we have Turian people. <laughs> so he, yeah, yeah. He, he seemed like a good choice because he had some good connections to the great powers of England and Russia came, started ruling, seemed like a nice guy, but a little bit after he started ruling, just a few years after that, he started having some problems and some fights with Russia. We really couldn't afford that, especially right after they liberated us, so it became very awkward very quickly. So pretty pretty soon we had to say goodbye. It'd be very sad. <laughs> so then we decided to import another guy, and we imported Ferdinand Saxe-Coburgotten of the Saxe-Coburgotten dynasty from Austria, and he also seemed like a nice guy, but he was very much into botanic, so he was all the time flowers over there, butterflies over there. So, yes, yes. Oh, so, I'm not happy. Did you see we, the face? We, we never took him seriously. We called him the Austrianer or the foreigner. So, we, the government wanted to do something that would make all of us take him more seriously. So, they did something that everybody loves. So, what do you guys love? What do you guys love? A big event. What do you love? Wedding. What did you say? Wedding. Exactly. So we invited the beautiful Italian princess Maria Luisa Bonframa and we have a big royal wedding and everybody's very happy. Yeah. And then, and then gets interesting. From the love of an Austrian and an Italian, a pure Bulgarian was born. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So, how could that happen? This, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how could that happen. This is King Boris III. The government wanted us now to take him more seriously, so they always referred to him as the first 
pure Bulgarian king, although you saw how pure he is, but he was born in Bulgaria, he speaks Bulgarian without an accent, so it's a huge improvement. So, King Boris III starts ruling, he seemed like a nice guy, people like him, but not everybody. Do you remember from my stories who didn't like King Boris the Third? Communists. Communists. I see you remember. I need two, two trophies. Many candies. <laughs> so the communists didn't like him. So he survived the assassination attempt at the Delhi Church. Remember? Yeah. He survived. He survived a few. He survived a few more assassination attempts. But towards the end of the Second World War, one night in his sleep in his palace, one night he passed away suddenly. We're not exactly sure what happened, but we are almost sure he was poisoned by Hitler because it's only a few days after dinner with Hitler. And if you remember my stories, Hitler had many reasons to be angry with us, okay? One way or another, we say goodbye and we're very sad. So, then comes his son, King Simeon II. As you can see, as you can clearly see, he was only six years old back then. So, he couldn't rule by himself, so he ruled through a regency council. But, it wasn't a very strong rule, so the communists took the opportunity and kicked him and his son into Spain. So imagine Bulgaria is here on the map, yeah. Spain is somewhere over there, so go to Spain. <laughs> so, communists come on power and they rule for about 45 years until 1989 when the Berlin Wall collapsed and we get very angry with them. Ooh. So you want to kick them out? <laughs> but no, it's not so easy with communists, it never is, never is, never is. <laughs> so they stay here and they just change their clothes. Now they're not the Bulgarian Communist Party, they're the Bulgarian Socialist Party, which is totally different, totally different. <laughs> so they're still in our government running from cabinet to cabinet, but wait a moment, are we forgetting somebody? King Simeon II, now in his 60s, thinking to himself, think to yourself, think to, thinking to himself, <laughs> wait a moment, I didn't get to rule Bulgaria back then as a king, so why don't I, why don't I come now and rule as a prime minister? Huh? Great plan, come over here. But, but, how do you make these strong spirited people vote for you? I'll tell you how. You go on national TV and you say, I will fix your country for 800 days. Trust me. But you're more broken Bulgaria because you forgot most of it. But, but people trust you and they're very happy. So the next time elections come around, you give him more than 50% of the vote, so he gets to make a cabinet of his own. So you guys, naturally, like he starts ruling, and you guys, naturally, start counting from 800 to 1 to see what happened on the last day. And can you guess what happened on the last day? We were fixed. No, of course, nothing happened. What did you guys expect? I, I can't believe you guys voted for him. But anyway, anyway. So the next time elections come around, you don't give him so many votes. So he couldn't make a cabinet of his own. So in order to continue ruling, he had to make a coalition with somebody. And people said in war, love, and politics, everything is possible. So you never guess who he made the coalition with. The same people, the same people that kicked him and his family six years ago, now they're best friends in the ruling together. And the Bulgarian people are like, what the f uh, what the hell? <laughs> so basically we get pretty angry with both of them. So now we send you back to Spain, but now you're richer in the kids, don't care. Thank you very much. And you're still in our government running from cabinet to cabinet. Thank you very much. But the Bulgarian people are always happy. Yeah. But God knows why. <laughs> so this was the last 140 years of kings, queens, rulerships and regimes. And thank you for participating in the royal drama. Oh. Do you have any questions or do you now know everything about our recent history? <laughs> Thought so. The I want to get the name. Ah, I'll tell you later. King Boris the third. Okay? So now follow me.